Uh, just recently, I heard um, that one of the things this time of year does is heighten uh, what is happening for us. Uh, if we're going through a tough time, it seems tougher uh, around this time of year. Uh, but if things are going good, it's a great time. You know, it's a fantastic time. And this got me thinking, and uh, one of the things that I have noticed about uh, Christmas time is that we can become tunneled visioned uh, about this time of year. Uh, to watch those who pursue the perfect gift is amazing. Uh, as they carefully analyze the receiver of the gift, their preferences, you know, what they have already received, you know, their current interests, an appropriate budget level. And then armed with a list, a carefully researched list, they go shopping. Uh, then there is the holiday planner. The one who has carefully planned the ultimate Christmas holiday experience. Having observed spe travel specials, uh, destination programs, Google comments on places, and this year, analyzed COVID restrictions all to maximize the time to holiday experience ratio. And then there's the food gourmet who has planned a feeding frenzy that would put a royal banquet to shame. The range of food options have been catered for from the meat eaters to the vegans. Uh, carefully selected and appropriately labeled non-allergenic foods have been included and al along with the accompanying drinks that need to go with each meal. And then there's also the survivor, whose sole goal is to survive Christmas. They do whatever it takes to get to the other side of Christmas with as much sanity as possible and with as little financial impact as possible. They will spend on those things that will calm the waves of anxiety. And they have a mantra that says, let's just get through this. Let's just get through this. Let's just get through this. Now, these might be a bit of a, uh, over an exaggeration, but they all come from people I have known who would be described kind of like this. However, the same thing happens in the Christian church as well at this time of year. Uh, there are those championing the calls that Jesus is the reason for the season. Uh, and I will quickly correct anyone who would seem to imply that Christmas is anything more than about Jesus. Uh, and then there are those so opposed to the commercialism of Christmas, they don't do anything Christmassy, or that could be seen as Christmassy. And don't get them started on about carols or Christmas Day services. Naturally, this puts them at odds with the full-blown Christian uh, Christmas spirit crowd who decorate churches, who plan carols, have a lead up to Christmas Day of carols, and, and they actually go and plan a live nativity scene, you know, track down an appropriate, you know, donkey if they can, if they can't, they get a large dog and, you know, that sort of thing, you know. Uh, anyone who's had a newborn baby will get drafted in, you know, so forth. Now, all of these types add flavor to Christmas. The problem can be, though, as we focus on a certain area of Christmas, is that we can forget that this time of year is actually messy and chaotic. Uh, it's full of energy. It's full of emotions, both highs and lows. I mean, it's messy today, and it was messy uh, the day that Jesus was born. When you think about it, Mary and Joseph have had to travel. They've had to battle accommodation problems. They suddenly found that they are to experience the birth of their first child. And then they experience the moment you see a newborn baby and realize you are now responsible for the well being of another. And that's the thing about Jesus' birth it brought both joy and responsibility, not only for Mary and Joseph, but for us, as it turns out as well. Well, hopefully we realize Jesus's birth is unlike any other. He 
is God's gift to his creation. Uh, Philippians 2 tells us that he gave up his divine privileges and humbled himself, born as a human being. And this is the birth that we celebrate. Uh, John 3 tells us this gift to us was done out of love, that God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Why? To come save the world through him. And Romans 5 tells us that God showed his great love by sending Christ Jesus to die for us while we were still rejecting him and his ways. It's this love we are, that we've received that we are also called to express as well. You know, the greatest commandment, love God completely with all that you are, love others you, as you are loved. We have been given a precious gift so just like the birth of a newborn, the gift brings with it responsibility. One who knew this so well was the Apostle Paul. I mean, he called himself the least of the apostles because he initially persecuted the church until he encounters the love and grace of Jesus. Now, while talking to the Corinthian church in his letter that we call 2 Corinthians, he speaks about this gift responsibility tension. He's talked about us getting new bodies, something that I think many of us are looking forward to, you know, sort of especially first thing in the morning when we get out of bed. And that in itself is an amazing gift. Then he talks about the new way we live, having accepted God's gift of his son. And as part of that conversation, he says these words. He does say these words. Yes. All of this is a gift from a God. He's reminding us that this is a divine thing, a God thing, not a human thing or me thing. Also, in being a gift, it isn't something that we've earned. I mean, if we, you and I had earned this, Paul would have said, all of this is a reward from God. It's a gift. It's the gift of being restored back into a relationship with himself. Who brought us back to himself through Christ. That is the meaning of Christmas. It's God's gift to restore his creation. After the world had been marred and corrupted by sin, God is now taking a major step in restoring his creation through the birth of Jesus the one who will save his people from their sins, according to Gabriel when he was speaking to Mary. This is an amazing gift, for there is no way you, me, or anyone else can restore the broken relationship we created with God. I mean, we can't suddenly become good and stop doing wrong things, somehow making us okay with God. That doesn't deal with the past things we've done. And also, as much as maybe we would like to, you and I cannot go back in time and tell our newborn self, don't break any of God's rules. Don't sin. Always do and think the things God wants. We can't do that. Now, only God has the authority and power to restore our broken relationship. And that is what he has offered, the gift of being able to follow our Lord and Saviour, Jesus. It's a wonderful thing to think that the birth of a baby to a virgin named Mary in a town named Bethlehem was part of the key to reconcile us to our creator. Of course, the other part of the key is in 98 days when we remember how much that reconciling cost God with Jesus willingly going to the cross, taking the sins, the rebellion against God of the whole world on himself and paying the price for those sins. And then rising to show that he has the authority and power to pay that price and to offer us the gift of life with him. For as Paul says, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. 
What a gift. So as Paul's notes, it's a gift that brings with it responsibility, uh, just like becoming a parent of a newborn. Uh, those of us who seek to follow Christ Jesus, who, are, who call him our Lord and Saviour, we have been given by God the task of reconciling people to God. That's both amazing and a bit daunting, to be honest, uh, that God would ask his creation, us, to be the means of helping and reconciling the world with himself. Uh, we are the agents of restoration and gift giving. We might feel like we might be up to it, but that is what we're called to be. And for those who haven't yet decided to follow Jesus, well, hopefully they will be comforted by the fact that the means of reconciliation isn't violent in nature. It's a message a wonderful message of reconciliation for Paulson. So I want to apologize if you've been bashed about by someone trying to convince you about Christian faith, or you've been told something about following Jesus that turned out not to be true. I only ask if you're willing, listen to God's message of love to you. That's what today is about. God's message of love to you. God wants a relationship with you and me. God made us so we could have that relationship with him, not because he needs to somehow justify his existence, but because he delights in his creation. After all, he knows you to the very core of your being. That's another scary thought, isn't it? That God knows me to the very core of my being. Probably knows me. He knows me better than I know myself. And just as he was able to form a child in a virgin's womb, he formed you and me. He made us in his image. He once delighted to walk in his garden with his creation, and he looks forward to doing that again. And Psalm 8 tells us, amazingly, he made us a little bit lower than himself. So as one of those called to represent my Lord Jesus, one of many God's ambassadors, I ask that today, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord, you consider the message he is giving you. That is, he gave himself, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. That offering began the moment a baby was born in a manger in Bethlehem. It continued to a cross in Jerusalem and continues to be offered today. It's an offer to all, not only to the good or the powerful or the beautiful or talented, though it is offered to them as well, it's equally offered to the criminal, the powerless, the ordinary, the everyday person. No matter where society places us and how valuable you are list, God places us all in his most precious category. He's willing to give so much for those he loves. A real hope this day is, is that will be a day that we all take a good, real look at the one who we are celebrating, Jesus. And for those of us who know him, let's share that wonderful news, the good news, the message of love and reconciliation with those that we meet, with family, with friends, the person down the road, the stranger. For those unsure about him, I pray that you hear his message to you today. Because if you do, it will bring with it a wonderful gift of life in Christ Jesus. And that is the best gift ever. Have a great Christmas.